they fall, verse 15, they fall, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, I just look to you this morning, Lord, I, I need your help, Lord, we all need your help. I need the help, Lord, that I might speak your word, Father God, uh, guided by your Holy Spirit, Lord, <clears throat> anointed by your Holy Spirit, Lord. I just pray that you, uh, you help me, Lord, deliver this message in a manner that is worthy of you, Lord. And I just pray for the church, Father God, that you give us all hearts to hear, Lord, that the word of God might dwell deeply in our hearts this morning, Lord, and change us and make us more like Jesus. In, in his name I pray and I give thanks this morning. Amen. Please take a seat. It is a sermon that um, I had in mind for a long time to, <clears throat> to share, but, and, and it took different shapes through this time. Uh, I mentioned a few things there and there already, so it's not something new. It's something that we all know, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will refresh this, this, um, this truths with us this morning. One day, Brother Vinod, uh, during our Sunday evening uh, uh, meeting, he says, Brother Sam, how can I be filled with the Holy Spirit? Uh, and then I, I tried to tell him a few things then, but um, I'll, I want to I wanna give an answer to this. And this is this, is this sermon this morning, this, this word this morning, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, um, <clears throat> we live in an age... <clears throat> when there is a lot of confusion when it comes to the Holy Spirit. The devil has done such a work to confuse people about the Holy Spirit. You look around in, our, in, in the circles, in, 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 in our Pentecostal charismatic circles, and what you see is, is just not, not much resembles the Holy Spirit that, that we see on, 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 in, in, in the scriptures here. You see the people of God, many of them have, you know, they, they profess to, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to believe in the Holy Spirit, to believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But when, when people look at their lives, when, when, when they see on TV what's happening in, in, among the churches that profess to believe, Pentecostal churches, it's, it's, it's terrible. So <clears throat> the fact that there is a fake work of, about the Holy Spirit out there, it means that there is a real one. If there is fake money out there, it means there is, there, is a, there is real ones there, very precious ones there. So let us not be discouraged when we look around and see uh, what's happening out there in, in, in the Pentecostal charismatic churches. Let us not be discouraged because I can see that many, even in our midst, many are lost, have lost interest in, in pursuing the Holy Spirit because of what they see around. Even in those circles that are close to me, I see that there's just so much confusion. Instead of following the scripture and, and pursuing the Holy Spirit according to God's ways, people try to cut corners. There is such a pride in many, many churches and many of our brethren when, you know, that there's, oh, we, we have these tearing meetings and praise God for the tearing meetings. I'm not against tearing meetings. Uh, tearing means waiting. It doesn't mean screaming and it doesn't mean praying very loud that God can hear. No. Tearing in, in the Bible means waiting. Waiting. Waiting on the Lord to move. Waiting on the Lord to, to fill our cups. That's what it means. Waiting and standing on, on the promises of God and, and preparing that God might fill, that my, that my fill our, our, our cups. Amen. The, the kids are back in here this morning. Looks like they need to hear also this message because in the last days, the, the Bible says in, in Joel that he, he will fill even our children with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So don't look around. This is something that I just want to plead with you all. Don't, don't look around. 
This is a command of God for all of us. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not optional for a Christian to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Another thing that I want to say, the Holy Spirit is not the same thing with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. All throughout the history of the church, more or less, God has filled people with, with the Holy Spirit and power. If the, our Pentecostal churches have started in 1910 in Azusa Street in America, when this truth about the, the restoration of the gifts of the Holy Spirit came out again, and, and the gifts have started manifesting in churches. But that doesn't mean that the God has not filled people with the Holy Spirit and power before that. There's people in, in, in the church history that were filled with, with the power of the Holy Spirit. If you know the church history, if you know the Methodist Church, if you know the Salvation Army Church, um, the Moravian Church, the, there's just people filled with power. Filled, in, even in the Baptist churches, people were filled with power. And in fact, God has used these people more than anyone during a, a certain age of the church, like for one or two hundred years to, to, to change the world. To, the missionaries have gone into all the world because of people who are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. No gifts yet. The gifts, as I said, were restored in 1910. That they've started being, you know, speaking tongues, prophecy and healing and all this stuff. But people were filled with the Holy Spirit and people were overcoming, overcomers because God has filled them with the Holy Spirit. So how am I going to, I just, I don't want to make it too long an introduction, but how am I going to feel now in this, in this day and age with so much confusion, how I can pursue the gift of the Holy Spirit, not just the gift, but the feeling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism with the Holy Spirit and power, because that's what I'm interested in, because if we, if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, if we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, then the, the gift, the, the, the Holy Spirit will decide which gifts to give to each one. It might be the gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the speaking tongues. It might be the gift of prophecy in one, because the gift of prophecy is so diverse. It's got many shapes, many forms. It might be dreams and visions. It might be healings and casting out demons and all that. Let him decide what to give to everybody. But if we receive this, the gift of the Holy Spirit and power from God, then, uh, then we will be more than overcomers. That's the will of God for us. When he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit, this command. So this is what I want to ask you this morning. Do you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Brother Sam, I desire, I've been praying for this, but I lost hope. I lost hope. I've been praying for so long, and I gave up. Where in the world, where in the Bible says that we need to give up? When Jesus talked about us, uh, you know, praying for the Holy Spirit, did he say to us to give up? Didn't he say that we ought to be like that man who had a, a visitor, in, and, and I think in Luke chapter 11, who, who a visitor came to him, a friend came to him, and he had nothing to give, and it was midnight hour, and, and, and then he went on to his neighbor, and, 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 and he just knocked on the door and never gave up, and never gave up. Jesus is telling us something here, that we are never to give up. If we are serious, if we mean business with the Lord, if we really desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit so we can be witnesses for him, so, so we can overcome, so we can live the life that, this beautiful life, look at here, man. To live this life rejoicing always, you know, making melody in our hearts, singing praise, singing um, melodies in our hearts, uh, giving thanks always, and sub being subject to, to the one. That's a sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now when you, can, when you are subject, subjected to one another, when you submit to your brothers and sisters in the church, you, that's a sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Nobody talks about it, but no, that's, that's something different. But this is, this is, this is a command, so this, I just want to, we, did, we didn't preach and teach enough on this, but I, I just pray that this, this thing, I want to preach more on this. And, and, and we take this, this, uh, this promise and the promise of God and the commandment of God here seriously. Because uh, in these last days, listen to me. In these last days, when, when we see the, the spirit of Antichrist, when we see our enemy coming out like a flood against us, our families and churches, the real Christians, we cannot make it. We cannot make, make it. Listen, we cannot make it unless we are filled with the Holy Spirit. There is a difficult 
very difficult days ahead of us for, and for our families, for our children, for the church. Very difficult. And unless we take this command seriously, you will not make it. We will, we will die in a loud this year in church. Lukewarm, backslidden, satisfied. Our love for the Lord lost. Wise virgins or unwise, foolish ones? Which one? The difference between wise and unwise, the, the, the ones that are going to make it and not going to make it, is the Holy Spirit. It's where, when our vessels are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the key there. So that's what I want to teach in a simple way this morning. How we ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not difficult. It's very simple. So I'm going to use a couple of illustrations from the Old Testament to, I don't know if I can finish today, but please open with me in <clears throat> Exodus chapter 40. Exodus chapter 40. The, the Lord gives us these illustrations that we might learn from them, that we might learn from them and see what needs to be done. Exodus chapter 40. If you have your Bible, please open your Bibles. Bring to, the, to church, not mobiles. Bring hard copies because this is much better to... <clears throat> To have a vi also a visual memory in your Bible of the Word of God. <clears throat> so chapter 39 and 40 here, we see that the Lord commands <clears throat> Moses to, to build the, the tent of the meeting. And, and all throughout 39 and 40, um, God is so specific about how this tent of the meeting ought to be built. And it gives them very specific things. And, and many times, I, I, I once counted them, I forgot, but it's, it's something like 17 times I've, I underlined in my Bible here that the, the Lord commanded, and Moses, he says, he did exactly as the Lord commanded. Every time when I read this scripture, the Lord is telling me, is telling me something. That if I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that if I want to be what I ought to be, I need to... This temple of mine, this tent of the meeting, you know that your body is the temple of God and, and your body is for him, it's the temple of God. That's where the Holy Spirit comes, right? So don't, we, we look at this as an illustration that God is giving us, the tent of the meeting, the, the first tent of the meeting that Moses has built. And we ought to learn lessons for ourselves. If we want the, the, the Holy Spirit to fill us, there is something for us to do. There is a responsibility that we have. It's not just, we have this, this uh, Calvinistic mentality that it's not about us, it's about the finished work of Christ. Um, we, you know, God starts and he'll finish and all these um, Christian slangs that we have there, which are not in the Bible. There is a responsibility for us to do. As Moses said, the responsibility to build the temple, he had to strictly adhere to the the instructions that the Lord has given them. Mo Moses could have improved a lot because if you look at the design and specifications of the tent of the meeting, it was outside, it was so humble, so, so simple, so rugged. And Moses was such a smart man in, in, in Egypt. He was such a smart man. He was probably the architect of architects. He learned in the high schools in Egypt. And he had to adhere. He had to fulfill the commandments of God. And Moses, the Holy Spirit says, he did exactly as the Lord commanded. Underline this in your Bible when you read these two chapters. Moses did exactly. So when, when we prepare this, this, uh, this tent of the meeting here, this temple here, when we prepare it, there are certain requirements and responsibilities that we need to, to fulfill before God uh, fills us with the Holy Spirit. And I just want to uh, read here in just a few verses. <clears throat> It says, then the, when, when they entered, it says in, in verse 32, when they entered the tent of the meeting and when they approached the altar, they, wa they washed, this is the last one, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Uh, it was a, 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 there's something that I had to do just before that. They washed. And there might be a washing in our midst, a cleansing that needs to, to happen before, before the Holy Spirit comes. And he erected the court all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the veil for the gateway to the court. Then Moses finished the work. Work was finished. And he says, Then the cloud covered the tent of the meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 
Uh, Moses was not able to enter the tent of the meeting because the cloud has settled on it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tent. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Underline in your Bibles there, the word filled. Then, then the, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle, all the tabernacle. Uh, throughout all the journey, whenever the cloud was taken up uh, from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not send out uh, until the day set out until the day when it was taken up. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle day by day, and there was a fire by night and in the sight of the house of Israel. Now this, this, is, this is what happened. You know, this is a, a perfect picture, a per perfect illustration of God filling a, a temple or at the tent of the meeting with the Holy Spirit. What do we learn from here? We learn that it is our responsibility to do something just as the Lord commanded us before the glory cloud comes and fills the, the meeting, the tent of the meeting. So I'm not going to use this scripture because there's another one more beautiful than this. And I, I, I want you to come with me uh, to uh, Second Chronicles <coughs> when... Uh, Solomon builds the temple and we all know how Solomon has, has built the temple and uh, I, I just want to go through uh, in, in chapter 5 and just go through, uh, through with you through a few verses so we can learn what we need to do uh, so God can fill the temple again it's another situation here when the temple was built it was finished and then God has filled the temple with the glory of God. And that, this is an, the perfect illustration for us to learn what we need to do so we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to read this, but there is at least three things here that we can learn uh, uh, from so we can do before. As Christians, I'm not talking to people who are not Christians here. I'm talking to those who are Christians and desire to be filled or refilled with the Holy Spirit. There are people here who have been filled with the Holy Spirit once and, <clears throat> and they forgot about it. They are dry as, I, I'm meeting a lot of them. I all, I've been filled with the Holy Spirit so many years ago when I was young and, and, and the Holy Spirit now is totally neglecting in their lives. They just lukewarm and there's no fire, there's no spark, there's no springs under their feet and they're not excited about Jesus anymore. They don't serve the Lord, they're just consumers. They come to church as people like that. There are people here and in every church where they're not sure whether they are filled with the Holy Spirit or they were really filled with the Holy Spirit because of the, so, so much fakeness out there. As we have this in, in all the Pentecostal churches. Since I was a kid, I saw this in, in, back in Eastern Europe and, and here in Australia. You know, in, in these stirring meetings, people come and, 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 and just come around and speak into your ear, you know. Say after me, say after me, or scream loud, hallelujah, or blah, blah, or all, all these things. This is cutting corners. This is, does not lead to the reality. And many people have experienced this. And it, it, it didn't bring, which didn't bring any change in their lives. They're back to all the same old lives. There's no power. They defeated Christians. That's not the Holy Spirit. This is fake. So we, there's a lot of bread running. There's a confusion all through and through. But if we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, what we need to do, what the Lord of God is, Lord God is telling us here in this, I find this perfect picture here. When, Mo, uh, when, when Solomon built a temple, the last thing he did, <clears throat> the last thing he did was bring the ark in. Please see <clears throat> verse 5. It says, they brought, they brought the ark of the, uh, and the, they, they brought up the ark and the tent of the meeting and all the holy utensils which were in the tent. And, uh, and in verse 7 it says, then, then the priest brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord in its place into the inner sanctuary of the house. Verse 10, there was nothing in the ark except the two tablets which Moses put there at Horeb. The first thing that, that, was, that was needed before the Holy Spirit would fill, because that, that's, what hap that, that's what happened there, you, you, you see further down. Three, four times it says that, 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 that the, the temple was filled with the glory of God, with the cloud of glory. 
And that's a, the illustration of a Christian which possesses this temple, our bodies to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The, the last thing, that, or the first thing that I did before that, they brought, they brought the ark inside the temple in the most holy place. Can you imagine that? The ark with the, with the word of God in it, with the commandments of God, was taken in the most holy place and placed there. That's, that is the deepest part of the temple. And that stands for our spirit or, or, or our heart, the deepest part of our heart, our inner sanctum. The word of God was placed there. Now, what is that meaning for us? What's the meaning to us? I just want to ask you, is the word of God in your heart this morning? Because if you tell me that, that you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and the word of God is not in your heart, it will never happen. What is your relationship to this book? I want to ask you, I, I ask myself too, what, what is your relationship with, with this book? Because this is the word of God. Oh, Brother Sam, I'm, I'm coming to church, I'm listening to sermon, we, we have this Bible study, we go and all that. That's not what I'm asking. I'm memorizing scripture, that's not what I'm asking. Pharisees have memorized scripture, they knew the scriptures more than anybody. They did a lot of Bible studies, and, and there's just so much Bible studies today, it's books and books, Bible studies everywhere, every church has got Bible studies. Where is the Holy Spirit? Where is the power? As I said, Pharisees knew the word more than anybody, and when they met the word before them, Jesus says, you, my words don't abide in you because you don't believe. That's John chapter 5. You don't believe in the one who sent me. In other words, I knew the word, but the word was before them. He says, my words don't abide with you because you don't believe in him. In other words, there's no faith. What, what is your relationship? To, to his disciples, he says, if you, he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you know, you can ask anything and you shall receive it. Right? That's to his disciples. So the, the place for the word of God is, is inside our hearts, there in, in, in the deepest part of our being. As the ark was placed in the deepest place in the temple, the word of God has to find, to dwell richly. Paul says to the Colossians, let the word of God dwell richly in, in, in your heart. Not in your mind. Not in your mind. And again, my question to me is, Brother Sam, what is your relationship with this book? Not when you come to church, not when you do the Bible studies. The, re the reality is seen when you press the pause button. That's, that shows you the reality if the word is in your, in your heart. When you have time free, is there a, is there a, a, a time when I'm going to run to the word of God? Because I, 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 I want to have fellowship with the Lord. You open the book and you start reading and feeding on this heavenly manna. That's easy. You, if you're just part of the system, just come and hear sermons and Bible studies and all that. Churches are filled with that. But what about you have two, maybe three of these at home? Do you take delight in, in the Word? What does, it, what does it make the difference? Brother Sam, I love the Word. If you love the word, you, 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 I want to see your Bible. How much color it is, how much you, you've underlined, how much you've, without preparing for a sermon or a Bible study. No, just because you love the word. That's what it means to have the word in your heart. To love the word. To love the word. And if you love the word, you run to it. And the church will say amen to that. You know, when you, when, you, when you love somebody, you like to talk about that one, no? And you love the word, you, you want to talk about the word of God. You know, when you meet a brother, you meet a sister, you meet somebody, forget about all the other things. Man, the, the word, there's a revelation here. There is something that the Lord has spoken to me from, from this verse, from this. Do you love the word? Because that's, you, you always speak about what you love, isn't it? Amen? So the first thing that we need to do so God can fill us with the Holy Spirit, bring the ark in, in the tent of the meeting, place it in the most holy place, in the deepest part of your being. 
How many will do that? <clears throat> you know what happened? The church in Ephesus has lost the first love. Maybe you once loved the word and you took pleasure in, in reading and, and feeding and, and, and consuming this book. You, but you lost. And you know what the Lord tells the church in Ephesus? who lost their first love, he says, do the things that you've done at first. But I don't feel, Brother Sam. Don't worry about what you feel. The word of God to you this morning is, do the things that you've done once when you love the Lord. And then the Lord will take care of the rest. Discipline yourself. Discipline yourself when it comes to having fellowship with God in the word. And God will restore that love. But if you don't, Love the word of God. It is when you talk with each other and when you're free, you go and watch movies and you do so many other things. So many other things. Important things. Sports and recreation. There's nothing wrong with that. These are good things, some of them. You know, I heard the preacher say that uh, actually Brother Basil's cousin yeah, you're saying that I compare this with, you know, in movies, in, in this soap opera, you, you, you see uh, a family, rich family, you know, employing a, a servant, employing a servant in the house. And the drama starts when, when one of the spouses falls in love with the servant. Servant is good, maids are good, nannies are good. But when one of the spouses falls in love with, with the servant and neglects the husband or the wife, what is that telling you? Money is good, isn't it? It's a, it's a servant. Sports is good. We need to move. We need to be healthy. But when that comes the priority and the husband is neglected or the wife is neglected, and you know what I'm talking about now, yeah? <clears throat> so, the word of God. Today is the day when you have to make a decision. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and not just Brother Vinod, all of us, restore the Word of God in your heart. Do the things that you've done at first. Start disciplining your life and start underlining this Bible, consuming this Bible. Let this book fall apart. You won't fall apart. <clears throat> if I look at your Bible and you see it's all clean. Many Bibles are clean. It's God have mercy on us. If we don't have a real love for the word of God, when we, po when we press the pause, pause button, nothing is going to happen. Do you, think, do you think the glory cloud would have filled the temple if the ark was not in the deepest, in the deepest part of the temple? Do you think? No. Can I read to you something? I meditated, I was so blessed last night. I meditate on this. Let me show you how, how, uh, how you can be if, if you love the Word of God. And this is the man that God fills with the Holy Spirit. Psalm 119, open your Bible with me. The whole psalm talks about this. A man who loves the Word of God. And this is what I encourage you all. Go home, take a pen, uh, color it, underline it, uh, you know, go through Psalm 119. I went through it last night. I think the Holy Spirit led me to it because I didn't, I didn't think of it before. But <clears throat> listen to this, this man who loves the Word of God. And this, this, is, this should be our picture. We are in the New Covenant people. We should be, our righteousness should be greater than the righteousness of the people in the Old Covenant, Right? This is, this, is, this is so beautiful. So I'm just going to spend a bit more time here in, the, in this psalm because I, wanna, I want us to be jealous. I want us to desire this. I want us to be hungry for this. Because if we don't take the word of God seriously, if we don't love the word of God, you know, the Holy Spirit is not going to come. The fire needs wood. The Holy Spirit is the fire of God. And if we don't have wood in our hearts, if the word of God is not dwelling richly in our hearts, there's, there's, there's no wood there. 
There's not going to be any fire, isn't it? So there has to be wood. And if it's on a heart, we love the word of God. Listen to this, 119. It says, how can a young man keep his, uh, his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. This is how you, you young men, you keep your, your way pure. Uh, with all my heart I sought you. Is that you? It says, with all my heart I sought you. Don't, lo- don't let me wander from your commandments. He says, like, this is a, 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 a man who loves the commandments of God. He says, your word I have treasured in my heart. When, when I said that, he says, man, how many of us should be ashamed because the word of God is not treasured in our hearts. He says, the word, your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. You, you want to overcome sin. You know why, why, why it's so hard sometimes to overcome sin in this day and age? It used to be very easy to, to get rid of all the addiction and overcome any sin in the past. I know. But today, we have these books in our, in, in our homes and, 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 and we never read it. We never consume it. We never delight in it. Uh, you'll see, you'll see this, uh, the picture of this, this, this man who loves the word of God. And we should be jealous. Uh, Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me, says your statutes. With my lips I have told of all the ordinances of your mouth. And listen to this. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies. This is the word of God here. I have re- the, the, his testimonies, his commandments, his percepts, his, his, his words, his, his promises. They, 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 this, this is the word of God. It's full of it. So, and he says here, I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies. Do you rejoice when you read the testimonies of God in, in, in the Bible? You read and you say, man, praise God, praise God. You know. is, is there something that gives you joy? I, I love this. You know. And, it's, and l- listen to the... I have rejoiced in the way of your testimony as much as in all riches. I mean, really, millions of dollars, mansions, all, all these riches, they bring people's joy, you know. But he says, no, I have rejoiced about your word and your testimonies and, you know, percepts, commandments. I have rejoiced more than that. Brother Vinod. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is, we cannot cut, cut corners here. We, we have to do just as, as the Lord has commanded Moses and has commanded us. Where is the wood in your hearts? I mean, brothers, I, I know the word. I know Pharisees knew the word too. I memorized it. I knew the word. But do you love the word of God? Because you love, you rejoice about you, you treasure in your heart. You rejoice about it. And look at verse 15, 16. I shall delight. I, I love this, these verbs. Rejoice, delight, treasure. Right? That means that the word is there in your heart. In his heart. God have mercy on us. We lost it. We just all come to church, listen to sermons. No. We ought to experience this. To love the word of God, to love the word of God. Start, start disciplining, crucifying the flesh who, who hates it. Do you think your, your flesh loves the word of God or, or, or runs away from it? No, your flesh doesn't. And we are led by the flesh rather than by the spirit. The spirit tells you many times, get into your Bible today. Go and on, go on spend time with the Lord. Go and go on start reading and meditating and feed on the word of God. I don't feel like, it says it's a lot of that. I don't feel this and I don't feel that. I don't feel to pray. I don't feel to lift up my hands. I don't feel to worship. I don't feel to, all these things led by the flesh. <clears throat> Listen, open my eyes. Verse, um, no, my soul is, it says, this. Listen to, this is extreme, isn't it? But this is normal. It says, my soul is crushed with longing after your ordin- ordinances at all times. A, a man in the old covenant, he says, my soul, it, it's a, there's a crushing, I'm so hungry, I'm so, I'm so in need, Lord, I, 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 I'm, I'm crushed inside, I, I just, I, I'm begging for it. 
24, verse 24. Your testimonies are also my delight. They are my counselors. Again, this verb, delight. Let's turn the page. Listen to this. This is, this is my comfort in all my affliction, that your word has revived me. We look for revival. Get into the word. That is the word. We, we so self-focus this night. That's why many of us get depressed. We look, instead of looking into the word of God and also feeding our souls and hearts in the word of God, we, we're looking at us. It says, Ma, this, this is my comfort in my affliction. I know we have many afflictions, but is this the word of God, your comfort in your affliction? I'll go further. Your statues, it says, are my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. In the house of my friends, this, this, they're my song. It's the word of God, your song. When, when you make melody in your heart, you can sing the song of the, the word of God. You can pray the word of God. I just wanted to make this, this to change a bit, you know. I was thinking when we come to the prayer meeting, all those who come to the prayer meeting, come at, at least read two, three verses and pray those verses when, you, when we take turns to pray. And I want everybody who comes to the prayer meeting, come with three verses or two verses or one verse. Come and pray that, 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 that that verse, that pray the word of God, sing the word of God, right? Meditate on the word of God. Verse 62, listen to the, a man who has the word of God, the ark inside his temple. It says, at midnight I shall rise and give thanks to you because of your righteous ordinances. At midnight, just rising and because of the word of God. I'll go quickly. Um, there's just so much more here. Uh, 92, if your law had not been my delight, then I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your percepts, for by them you have revived me. That's you want revival, you want to be revived by the word of God. The Holy Spirit needs the word to be able to, to quicken us to life. It needs to be the, inside our hearts. I will never forget your sweat, for by them you have revived me. Verse 97, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. A man who loves the word. How sweet are your words to my taste. Listen, I like, I like this, you know. Is the word of God sweet to you? If, it's, if it's the word of God is sweet, you run to it. You get your Bible and when, when you pause the, press the pause button, you run because it's, 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 it says, how sweet, verse 103, how sweet are your words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Verse uh, 111, I have inherited your testimonies forever, for they are the joy of my heart. As a, as a man who loves the word of God, the, the ark is inside the temple. Uh, one more. This is just so many more. Yeah, but just in closing, it says here, seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous ordinances. To praise God for his word. That's, that's something. I just praise you, God. You, know, you read something, I praise you, God. I, pray, I sing praises to God because of the ordinances of God. Because of your righteous ordinances. Those who love your law have great peace. You want peace in your heart? I says, those who love your law have great peace and nothing causes them to stumble. Nothing. I hope for your salvation, O oh Lord, and do your commandments. Not just think, not just meditate, not just rejoice, not treasure, not just rejoicing, no, no. But I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep your persons and your, your, and your testimonies for all my ways are before you. What a picture of a man in the old covenant who shows us what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Loves the word of God inside the heart. There's joy. Look at all this verse, beautiful verses. Joy, sweet, treasure. Delight, longing for, panting for the word of God. If we want to, if we want to 
be filled with the Holy Spirit from today. Back to the Bible. You go home today, just go and bring the ark inside. Bring the ark inside. There's something that I've read in 2 Kings chapter 22. I'm not going to go there and open because we're running out of time. In 2 in second, <clears throat> in second Kings there, we, we read about Josiah. Josiah was a young king. He came to, uh, he raised, um, he, he became a king, I think, when he was eight years old. And before him, um, six, about 60 years before he became king, there was a good king in Israel. His name is Hezekiah. And you know Hezekiah, you know, prophet Isaiah prophesied during his reign. And he was the king who fell sick and prayed the Lord to heal him. And the Lord added 15 years to his, to his life. You know, after Hezekiah, there was two bad kings in Israel. One was, I think, was Manasseh and, and one was Ammon. And both of them reigned for about close to 60 years, if I remember well. And during these 60 years, um, Israel, Judah has backslid really badly, like really badly. Uh, you, you, if you read the, chap- the, 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 the two chapters there, you see in the 60 years, you know, people have started um, worshipping Baal and Ashtaroth and worship the sun and the moon. And, and you find mild prostitutes in the temple. Couldn't get worse than that. And Josiah comes, this young man, eight years old, comes to the temple. And by the time he was 16 or 18, how many of you are 16 and 18? There's a good example of what God can, can make of a young man or how God can use a young man. This young Josiah is, is, is just awesome. Uh, he has in his heart to do some repairs in the temple and he sends his, uh, his, his uh, scribe to, <clears throat> to go on in the temple and, and, and where the money box is and, and find how much money there is there so they can do the repairs of the temple. And... and uh, <clears throat> When, when they go and open the money box, there's money there uh, left. But the, the, the great priest was there also. His name is uh, Hilkiah, if I pronounce it right. Hilkiah. And, and a cover there with money, they, they found the book of the law. And uh, many scholars believe this is the second book of uh, the, the Deuteronomy. Uh, and, and it finds the book of the law that was lost in the temple. It was lost in the temple. And, and uh, Hilkiah comes and says to his scribe, the scribe there to, to take this book to the, to the king, to, to Josiah, and read it to Josiah. And he, as he reads it, to, as, as the scribe reads it to Josiah, Josiah hears the word of the Lord and he tours his, his, his clothes and he weeps. And, and with that, he says, a, a, a revival has started in, in, in Judah. You know, he goes on and he restores the temple and he goes on and, and pulls down all the false gods and cleans all this immorality from the land. And, and for the first time, since, the Bible says that since the day of the judges, they never celebrated Passover. So now he institutes and the, the people in Judah celebrate Passover. What a, an awesome a story of revival and restoration in, in the land. Through a young man, Josiah, who, who read the word of God, heard it, and, and, and cried and, 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 and tore his clothes. 18 years or 16 or 18 years old. That's just an awesome young man. But in, in one of the verses says that they found the book of the law in the temple. And I meditated on this. The, the word of the Lord was there all the time, but it was lost in the temple. And I meditated on this. I said, man, this might be the situation with many of us. Maybe we, we have the word of God. We, we have the word. It, 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 it's there in, 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 in our hearts, but it's been lost. It's just covered with money. As if that tells you anything. The, the book of the law, the, the commandments of God, the word of God can be lost in the temple, in your heart. Today is the day that you can find the lost book of 
God that might be lost in your heart. How many of you? I, I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. You raise it before the Lord. If the, the word of God has been lost in your heart, in, the temp, in your temple, find it today. Amen. So this, this, is, this is something that I, the Lord has spoken to me. I spoke with JP about this, and the, the, the Lord uh, needs both the word and the spirit to work. Uh, one of the church fathers, Irineo, says that the Word and the Spirit are the hands of God. Word and Spirit. And that's how He works. He worked from the beginning, Word and Spirit. And I just pray that we, uh, uh, you know, that today you're not going to be satisfied just coming and hearing a sermon or doing a Bible study, but you're going to take this book, discover this book, restore this book in your heart, the precepts, the law, the commandments, the, the testimonies of God, in your heart, and learn, discipline yourself, and learn to love it, delight, long for it, rejoice over it, um, and, and feed on it every day. And there, you are a step closer to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Without wood, no fire. Easy to understand? Amen? Very easy to understand. Easy to be done? Yes, easy. What are our priorities? If our priorities is, Brother Sam, I want to be filled this year with the Holy Spirit. I want to experience the promise of God, Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit who comes with power so I can be a witness by word and deed, by, by life, so I, can be what the, so I can live like Jesus lived. That's what the Bible says. Then I'm going to make this a priority and I'm going to start with doing just as the Lord commanded. Get the word in your heart. Even if you don't feel like it. Day by day. Put some time aside. Even in your car sometimes, you didn't think of, instead of thinking about so many other things, about the, you know, the servants and the, and the nannies and all this, think about the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Learn to love the word of God like you probably once did. And then you are a step closer. Next thing in... Um, that has happened here. And when the, the word of God comes in our heart, it says that, that um, they brought the ark in, and then the, the priests have sanctified themselves. And that's what happens. Before the Holy Spirit, there must be a cleansing. There must be a sanctification. And the word of God does that. Take this seriously. The word of God, Jesus prayed in the... In the priestly prayer, John 17, it says, Father, sanctify them with your truth. Your word is the truth. When the word of God comes in our, in our, in the, in, in our beings, in, in our hearts, without even realizing, we repent, we turn, we change. By the grace of God, it happens automatically. If the word is in our heart, if it's just in our mind, nothing happens. But it, it, when you learn to love the word of God, we're getting sanctified. We, we just let go. We just let go of whatever, lo loving all these maids and, and nannies and servants. Let go of them. They're good, but we depend from whatever, whatever stands in the way at the moment from you being filled with the Holy Spirit. It might be your comfort. It might be your sleep. It might be your food. It might be social media, TV, movies, sports, whatever it is, you know, these are just servants. These are not, some of them you need to get rid of altogether. They, they shouldn't be there because they're too tempting, right? So there is a repenting, there is a sanctification, a cleanse. The Bible says, in, uh, Paul says to Timothy, in the house of God there are many vessels, some of honor, some of dishonor. And he says, if, 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 if people are cleansing themselves, they become vessels of honor, this cleansing of, you know, uh, then they become vessels of honor that, they can, that God can use for any good work. I, I don't want to stress here that much. Why I don't want to stress that much uh, uh, on, on this point? Because I know it's necessary, but if the first point, if the word of God comes in our hearts, you know what happens? The Holy Spirit is helping us to change, to repent. And the Holy Spirit helps us 
to this word to become flesh in us. As, as the word has become flesh, Jesus has become flesh by the word of God and by the spirit of God. He was the word and the spirit was there and, and the word put on flesh. It is so. If the word is there, the Holy Spirit, it will, without even us realizing, we will change. You will change. You will get sanctified. Right? One more thing. So I'll, I'll, I'll just close because I, I, I think we need to close. But one more thing. And, and this is beautiful. Um, after they sanctify themselves, he says, then in unison with the trumpeteers and the singers, uh, um, and they started praising and glorifying the Lord. And when they lifted up their voices, uh, accompanied by trumpets and cymbals and instruments, uh, and when they praised the Lord, saying, He indeed is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting, says, Then the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priest could not stand in and minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house. But chapter 7 beautifully again describes. Now it says, when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings. I like this is another point that we can, there must be burnt offerings. What is burnt offering standing for? Of, you know, sac new covenant sacrifices. What are new covenant sacrifices? What are the new covenant sacrifices? We, we don't sacrifice any more bulls and goats and lambs and all that. What do we sacrifice? Come on. Brother, <laughs> what do we sacrifice? Our lives. Our lives. The, the main sacrifice is, you know, Paul says in, in Romans chapter 12, he says, he says, bring your bodies, put them on the altar. That's a, that's a, that's a living sacrifice, right? You, you surrender to the Lord there. That's a very important point. Without yielding, without surrendering to the purpose of God, to the will of God in your life. No, but there's a lot of offerings that, a lot of sacrifices that God is pleased with, those songs of praise and thanksgiving and prayers and fasting. This is new covenant offerings to God, burnt offerings to God. Start living, not just reading, not just consuming the word, but having fellowship in prayer with God and take days of fasting. This is, this is what we do. And this is what Christians throughout ages have done. Because they wanted to, to, do, to do just as the Lord commanded. And when they started praising God in unison, I mean, I cannot emphasize this enough. You, you, sometimes I believe some of you are bothered with me because I emphasize so much, you know, on praise in the church. Praise and thanksgiving. And I, I can see that we, we, we're running, you know, we have so few words when it comes to praise and thanksgiving. We're running out of words. I need, I, 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 this is when the Holy Spirit falls, when I started praising God, singing, praising God. Read it. I, I, it's, it's not me. So I bring the word in your heart. Bring the ark of, bring the commandments, the precepts, the laws of God in your heart. This book, the whole of, the whole of it, the testimonies of God. Right? Sanctify yourself, and the, the Lord will give you grace. As I said, it's not, it's not hard to sanctify. But that's why the first point is so important. Get the word in your heart. Yield it to the Lord. Place your all on the altar, your body on the altar. Be a living sacrifice. Surrender it to him. And then let praise begin. Stand before the Lord and not just in the church. Learn some praises, compose some praises, make melody in your heart, sing to the Lord. That's what we sing in Ephesians. Sing to the Lord at home, not just in the church. Again, this is, this is not real if it's just the church. The church, we are to encourage other that we might be, after the meeting finishes, what the Lord wants us to be. That we might be worshipers in spirit and in truth. And we might, during the day, you know, sing praises to God, learn, enjoy praising God. Because in heaven, you see, the, 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 the whole host of heaven is just, just full of praise. They, they, they are consumed with the praises of God. And endless praise, endless praise. Just worthy, worthy, holy, holy, holy. You know? and, and, and then the Holy Spirit comes. I, I, I have so many testimonies that I can give you. I just wanted to give you one, two, two, two sisters. This is not, this is I 
read about them on 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 the Simon Index forum. You know, as I said, Simon Index forum has got different forums. People talk about different topics, and it was this this topic about the how people receive the Holy Spirit and what what was the the thing that that, that triggered God to to fill them with the Holy Spirit. And it was these two Baptist sisters who heard about a small revival in a in a small church in in the states. And they said, man, I, I just, let's go, let's go there. And uh, <clears throat> they go there and, and you know how the, the Baptists, they, they don't like to leave their hands, you know, it's not in the Bible for them. So, they, and, and the pastor came and it was all, the whole church was praising God and a small church and one of the pastor or somebody came and lifted their hands up and, and the moment they lifted the, their hands up, you know, there was a, this release and the Holy Spirit comes, comes and, and fills them both. Start praising God. Start praising God. Let the praise of God be real in your life. You're in the car. You're, you know, find some time. Sing. Let the Ephesians picture there. Sing. Make melody in your heart. Sing praises. Sing hymns to the Lord. Make melody. Let this be real. Let it just start doing it. Start praising God for who He is. Because with such sacrifices, the Lord is what? This? Pleased. <laughs> this is awesome. So I'm not going to give up exhorting you to praise God with all your heart and strength. See, we out, when we praise God, they say, Ma, well, why is it necessary to... We, we have this, uh, the, the, this, 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 this Greek mentality that, oh, I sing praises in my heart and, and if I sing, I, you know, I've, I've got a Stand straight and head down. All this head down is not in the Bible, by the way. You know, it's all tradition of men. When Jesus, I said, when Jesus prayed, he lifted up his, his eyes to the Lord. He didn't close his eyes. We come up with that because we, we easily distracted people. We don't know how to fel have fellowship with the Lord. But, you know, we, we, we don't, this is, this is Greek mentality. This is coming from Plato, who brought this, this, this thought was brought by the church fathers in the church that to worship God with your body, body is sinful. I don't know where they got that, but body is sinful. We ought to just worship inside with our spirit, not the body. And that's why even today, not many, we used to, I come from a church back in the day where you, when you prayed, you went on your knees you stood up, you prayed on your knees. Now, that worshiping with the body, lifting up hands, clapping, bowing before the Lord, falling. Even at, um, when I spoke about worship, um, Brother <coughs> Chris came to me and you know, the worship in, in Greek comes from the word Brother Proskineo. Proskineo, right? What does it mean, Brother? To bow down, to go on your knees, to bow down before the Lord. It's a physical work. You see in heaven, you know, even though they don't have this, but they, they just, there is this falling down, this bowing down, there is this body and spirit all together worshiping God. Why with this Greek mentality from us? Worship comes from the Jews. Go and see how they worship God and how they praise God. There's something we can learn from them. But this is the last thing. And I just pray that if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, again, start with the Word of God. Start with the Word of God. Start doing the things that you've done at first. And if you've done it, start, start enjoying the Word of God. Not just when I preach here, when we preach, go home and devour this book. Devour it. There's many of us even here who never read this book from cover to cover yet. There's a tragedy in the, in, in the church. We have so many translations even. We never took time why? Because of maids, because of other nannies in your life. Right? Start with this. And this will help you be sanctified. This will help you change. And then, you know, yield it, surrender it to the Lord. Bring it all to the Lord. And then start praising God. Offer sacrifices to God. Every day, when you have some time, maybe even your car on the way to work, 20 minutes, half an hour, what a beautiful time alone with God. 
standing, speaking to him, praising him, honoring him, giving him thanks, nonstop. And you, if you do that, I tell you what, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. God is faithful. I believe God is more faithful and more desiring to, to fill people with his spirit than, than we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because to be filled with the Holy Spirit, it means that the, through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, God the Father and God the Son will come and abide within our hearts. And that is the, the desire of God from eternity, that he might live within his people. And this is not, like in the Old Testament, a fading glory. Book of, in, in, in Acts chapter 13, it is, uh, the, the New Covenant, it says the disciples were continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just once, not just here and there, but continually. And this is the will of God for all of us. Amen.